I'm Rick, and I want to talk about the Erms spear release mechanism. Or should that be pronounced Ernie's? I had an idea for a gun, and I thought I'd try these mechanisms. They're, um, some people speak highly of them, so I thought I'd give it a go. First thing you'll notice about it is that it's um, a reverse mechanism. The trigger's at the front of the actual mechanism. Some people regard this as an advantage because it gives you a bit more spear gun in front of the mechanism, but I'm not quite of the same opinion. When the mechanism's mounted in the gun, uh, there's a fair bit sort of sticking out the back here, which is the whole point of the, of the reverse mechanism. But this is over where the, uh, the handle is joined to the stock. And there's a hole, obviously, for, for the pocket for the mechanism. And this means that the, the area here hasn't got a lot of wood in it. If there's not a lot of wood, it's not very strong. Seems to me the last thing you want is a weakness around the handle to the stock joint. You don't want that handle breaking off when you're fighting a fish of a lifetime. And also, if a shark comes in, starting giving you a bit of grief, you want to be able to poke it away. And you don't want the handle to break off while you're poking away the shark. But arms make a big point of this being quite a short mechanism. And they suggest that uh, this means that when you put it in the gun, it doesn't, well, it leaves a bit of space. I can, I can put a dowel down here, um, you know, which, which can strengthen it considerably. The other problem with reverse mechanisms is that the internal geometry is such that it's difficult to get a long, slow pull on the trigger. The, uh, to release the spear, you have a sort of a short jab with your finger. And some people say they don't like this. On the plus side, the, the sear and the internals use rollers, which uh, should make the action smoother. Of course, the rollers are another moving part, and every moving part adds to the, uh, the parts that can fail. But I've never heard of um, these falling apart or breaking. The mechanism's nicely made. It looks well constructed. Engineering looks good to me. It, it feels like a quality item. One of the great features is the way in which you install it into the stock of a spear gun. You've got a hole here and holes here. You don't have to drill holes through the side. And uh, this makes fitting it pretty easy. The pocket's not overly large and pretty easy to chop. However, the mechanism's designed so that the, uh, the bottom of the spear here is pretty well parallel with this flat piece here, which is great if you've got a flat top on your stock. But if you want a spear channel, you have to drop the, um, the, the part of the stock where the, uh, the mechanism comes into contact. In this gun, which I'm starting to build, you can see where I'm starting to make a little rebate on the surface there. The depth of which is about three and a half millimetres and it's three and a half millimetres because when I eventually do the, uh, the spear channel, that'll be about three and a half millimetres. Another great feature is the uh, line release. It's ample, it looks relatively robust, which is good. And um, it sits above the top of the stock. This is a pretty positive feature. It improves the ease with which you can fit the, the, the mechanism. There's less fancy measuring and careful cutting to make a slot for the line hook. The mechanism is pretty short from top to bottom. This allows you to make a stock that will put a handle with the center of resistance, which is up high. And this improves the accuracy of the gun. Helps to shoot it flat. You can see how thin the stock is above the handle. It's only about 20 millimeters. And that's not counting the rebate for the bigger trigger mechanism. So that thin stock is good for accuracy, but it's starting to look a bit thin to me, especially since there's a mech pocket in the middle. If it's too thin, it's weak. And instead of the handle breaking off the, the stock, you might just have the stock snapping around the mechanism if you gave it a good bump. I've seen several guns that have been built this way, but most of those are smallish guns, uh, you know, about a, a meter in uh, stock length. I think when I start to finish in this particular gun, I'll probably lay a piece of uh, uh, fiberglass tape on there, maybe one under here to the butt pad, which hasn't been installed yet. That and having the handle 
uh, all in one with the trigger guard should make the whole lot a bit stronger. So, do I like the Elms mech? I reckon it's probably pretty good on light guns. But the potential weakness in the stock handle joint, or the, the stock at that end, makes me wonder just how good this would be in a large gun, you know, bigger than about 1.2 and two others. I'd start thinking about another sort of mechanism for that.